In this video, we'll have a brief introduction to the UCSC Genome Browser. You can start by going to genome.ucsc.edu, and at the top of that page, clicking on Genome Browser. By default, it takes you to the human genome, although you can access the genomes of many other organisms by clicking the Genomes link at the top left. And by default, it's taken us to a position on chromosome 9, but right away you have the search bar where you can enter different chromosome positions or gene names. As an example, I'm going to use a gene called IGF1, and if I enter that and say search, it tells me everything it knows that relates in any way to IGF1, but the top hit is what I was looking for, this insulin-like growth factor. I can click on that, and it takes me to the IGF1 gene in the genome. It tells me I'm on chromosome 12 from base pair 102,395,874 through base pair 102,480,645, a span of almost 85 kilobases. I can move very far to the left, or a little bit to the left, or to the right using these arrows. I can zoom in or out using these buttons at the top. I also have a little diagram of chromosome 12 showing where I am, this red bar relative to the centromere, and other cytological features. I'm in position Q23.2. And then down below I have the browser itself. It's organized as a series of independent modules called tracks, which are highlighted here in green as I go over each one. I'll walk you through a few of them. The first track is the gene itself. The heavy bars represent individual exons, and the thin bars represent introns, and the little tiny, tiny arrows show you the direction of transcription. I can click on the gene, and it has a wealth of information about it. A short summary, links to information in other databases, toxicogenomic databases, microarray expression data, other kinds of expression data, mRNA secondary structure information, protein structure information, and remember it has this for every gene in the human genome as well as in many other genomes. I'll go back to the genome browser itself. Other tracks that are displayed by default include information about histone, histone modification marks, DNA sensitivity, conservation among different vertebrates, common SNPs, and different kinds of repeats. Let's say I want to look at the SNPs in this gene. Right now the SNPs track is sort of far away from where the exons are. I can just click it and move it up, drag it up, so that I can see how it overlays more closely. Right now it's in a very dense view, so I can't see individual SNPs, but I can hold down the control key and click on this left-hand bar, and I can expand it, let's say, to pack view. This is from invisible to very dense to very, very uh, lots of information. I'm going to take this not quite as much as lots of information, and now I can see each individual SNP. These RS numbers are the names of individual SNPs, and you can see there's some other information. Each one's in a different color and I can see what that coloring means and configure it by again control clicking and going to the configuration tab for that track. Each of the tracks can be configured in different ways. This is just one example. Here you can see there's coloring options for that track. Right now the red SNPs affect splice sites or are non-synonymous SNPs. The green ones are synonymous and the blue ones are in untranslated regions. I can change the coloring, or I can change what kinds of information is colored. For example, I can color instead by allele frequencies. So now red will be rare alleles, and blue will be more common alleles. And if I hit Submit and go back to that, you can see the coloring's changed. OK, I'm going to condense that back down to the dense view. I'll show you one more thing. You can also go down below, and there's many, many other tracks with all kinds of other information that are currently hidden. I'll display one of these, this GWAS information. I'll also display it at the pack level, and it's going to hit refresh to add that track to my browser. And this will now show me any SNPs that were found in uh, genome-wide association studies as being relevant to some human phenotype. And there's a single SNP in this region. I can click on that to get more information about it. It shows me that this SNP was found in a genome-wide association study of 19,633 Japanese subjects. IGF-1 was found as an adult height locus. That is an overview of the Genome Browser. As I said, there's much more to discover here, but you can uh, click through the Help buttons. There's many tutorials online, and also just clicking on things is a good way to find out what they do. This is just enough to get you started, I hope. Good luck!